good job. Okay, uh, just in case there's somebody out there that's wondering uh, who are these guys, I'll introduce the crew of STS-7. Commander Bob Crippen, Pilot Rick Houck, Mission Specialist John Fabian, Sally Ride, and Norm Thaggart. And Crip. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate su such a large group coming out today. We're looking forward to it. If we can keep weather like this, uh, we're certainly ready to go on Saturday. I uh, think the Kennedy launch team has done a super job once again and proven that they can turn around a vehicle uh, faster than we've ever done it before. And we're looking forward to getting airborne just as soon as we can. Uh, why don't everybody say hello. Rick, step up the bike. Sure good to be back and we'll look forward to being back in about nine days. Or maybe ten. <laughs> Rick said that pretty well. I don't think I can add anything. <laughs> sure thank you all for coming out. It's always been good to come to KSC, but I think we have special reasons for thinking that this is a little bit better than normal. Thanks a lot. It's good to be home in Florida, and uh, although I usually hate to leave it, I guess I'll be glad to leave it at least on Saturday. It's good to be here. Thank you all very much. This is shuttle launch control, T minus three hours and holding. The astronaut flight crew of Bob Crippen, Rick Houck, John Fabian, Sally Ride, and Norman Thagard are presently in the room in the astronaut quarters ready for uh, breakfast. Commander Bob Crippen is in the, the center of the group, all of them wearing uh, striped t-shirts this morning. Bob Crippen, commander of the seventh flight of the space shuttle, will be the first astronaut to have flown on the shuttle for the second time. He was pilot on the first space uh, shuttle launch just slightly more than two years ago. Born in Beaumont, Texas, he grew up in nearby Porter. He's a captain in the U.S. Navy, married, and has three daughters. Crippen has also been selected as a commander of the STS-13 crew, will be, which will be the first mission to recover an ailing spacecraft from orbit, the Solar Maximum Mission. S seated on uh, his left is Mission Specialist Dr. Sally Ride, who will be the first U.S. woman to fly into space. Dr. Ride emphasizes she's a mission specialist and scientist who happens to also be a woman. Seated at the end of the table is uh, Rick Houck, who is the pilot on this mission. He joined the astronaut corps in 1978 after a distinguished career as a naval aviator. He served in Vietnam and was named the outstanding Navy test pilot in 1972. A number of other people joining the astronauts for breakfast, which has a large cake with the patch, which was designed especially for the STS-7 crew, which is always baked by the, the manager of the astronaut office uh, here at Kennedy Space Center, Nancy Gunner. This is shuttle launch control, T minus two hours, 28 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. And our astronaut crew has just left their crew quarters, uh, moving into the elevator to come down to the first floor of the ONC building for their trip to the pad. Uh, Commander Bob Crippen leading the way and uh, everybody crowding into the elevator so that uh, they can get down to the bottom. The, uh, just prior to that, uh, the NASA test director said that there would be another uh, checkpoint. He asked everybody to look at their uh, criteria and that he'll be getting back to them prior to the actual time when the crew goes on board. But at this point, there are no constraints to the launch. Uh, a number of employees uh, flashing their cameras as uh, the crew comes out, led by Commander Bob Crippen. Uh, John Fabian, the tallest of the group, once quite worried that he was just too tall to be an astronaut, 
Uh, with the Rumier spacecraft, that's not a problem. Uh, Dr. Norman Thagard bringing up the, uh, the rear has the distinction of being the first medical doctor to fly into space. And the crew will be going out to the pad uh, in a uh, recreational vehicle, a type vehicle this time. Uh, the last trip of the old Astro van, which has taken astronauts to the pad for many years, uh, has uh, been completed now. Uh, the crews are getting larger, and uh, there's no longer room uh, uh, to accommodate everybody that's uh, necessary. Uh, the door being closed, and the, uh, this is an interim uh, Astro van, and uh, will be uh, replaced in the, uh, the future. This is the largest crew. Uh, one of the firsts on the STS-7 mission is the size of the crew, which is uh, at five, is the largest one uh, to have flown so far. But that number is going to be going up to uh, seven, and possibly more on future flights. A van pulling away from the uh, ONC building, where the astronaut quarters are located in the uh, industrial area. Commander Bob Crippen now in the white room, uh, putting his Snoopy hat on, and then uh, he'll be putting on his uh, launch and entry helmet. During the first few flights of the, uh, the shuttle, a full pressure suit was needed, uh, and so the helmet's attached to that suit. Uh, however, nowadays, uh, only coveralls are used, uh, plus a, a special harness. Uh, which is used for restraint and emergencies. And uh, <laughs> Commander Bob Crippen uh, being brushed off with a, uh, a whisk room, and now his uh, shoes being wiped off uh, so that he doesn't track any, uh, any dirt into the, the clean interior. Uh, and he has just uh, patted the uh, suit technician uh, on the back uh, and is now entering the orbiter Challenger. Uh, pilot Rick Huff moving into the area, uh, shaking hands with the uh, uh, technicians up there prior to putting on his uh, vest. And he'll be the second one to, uh, to enter the orbiter for the seventh mission of the space shuttle. The countdown clock at T minus two hours, five minutes, 30 seconds and counting this is shuttle launch control. Of course, the focus of media attention around the world has been on Dr. Sally Ride, uh, who emphasizes that she's a mission specialist and a scientist who just also happens to be a woman. However, as the first woman to fly in space on board a U.S. spacecraft, history is undoubtedly going to focus on that uh, as well as her accomplishments to date, such as a doctorate in physics from Stanford University. She's married to Dr. Stephen A. Hawley, uh, who also is an astronaut. And she was also selected in 1978 and served as capsule communicator for the STS-2 and STS-3 missions. During this mission, she's going to have a number of vital tasks to perform, such as launching the Palapa satellite and deployment and recovery of the SPAS-1 spacecraft, 
honors that she'll share with fellow mission specialist John Fabian. Dr. Thagard uh, has the distinction of being the first uh, medical doctor to fly, and uh, he will be taking a, a close uh, first-hand look at the effects of uh, motion on the uh, on human in space. Prior to uh, become the starting his medical studies, uh, he had been a naval, uh, been a captain in the Marine Corps and a naval aviator, uh, flying 163 combat missions in Vietnam. Uh, he then came back uh, to the, the States and uh, took his Doctor of Medicine degree from Texas Southwestern Medical School in 1977 and was an intern when he learned of the call for new astronauts and was selected for that program in 1978 also. T-minus 25 seconds and counting. The sequence are on board now controlling the final seconds. T-minus 17 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed brake are in launch position. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We go for main engine start. We have main engine start and ignition. And liftoff, liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Roll, okay. Roger, roll, Challenger. Houston now controlling. Mission control confirms roll maneuver starting. Ground time on OS count 217 Billy. 20 seconds. Rust looks good. 25 seconds. Roll maneuver completed. 30 seconds. Challenger now one nautical mile in altitude. Throttling engine stand on out of 75% of its program. 40 seconds. The Challenger now two and a half nautical miles in altitude. 45 seconds. Challenger now three nautical miles in altitude. 50 seconds coming up now and create a maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. 55 seconds. Challenger four and a half nautical miles in altitude. Mark one minute. Pass through Max Q, still looking good. Throttle in engine back to 104 percent. Give it a go at throttle up. Challenger Houston, you're going throttle up. Mark 1 minute 25 seconds. Challenger now 11 nautical miles out. Two-engine towel capability. Roger, two-engine towel. 
Mark, three minutes. That call up by Capcom Roy Bridges says the Challenger now has landing capability at Dakar Airport should one engine go out. Mark, three minutes, ten seconds. Challenger's three main engines continue to run smoothly. Challenger's five-person crew really moving out now. Velocity now reading 7,200 feet per second. Three minutes, 25 seconds. Challenger, 45 nautical miles in altitude. A return status check emission control by flight director Jay Green. Three minutes, 35 seconds. Crew aboard Challenger given a go to continue. Three minutes, 40 seconds. Challenger, 48 nautical miles in altitude, 105 nautical miles down range. Standing by now for negative return call up by Capcom Roy Bridges. Challenger, Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. Three minutes, 57 seconds. With that call up, Crip and Hauk ride Fabian Fagard uh, committed to space travel. Roger that. Four minutes, ten seconds. The uh, flash evaporator has been activated to provide cooling for Challenger. Mark four minutes, twenty seconds. Challenger now 54 nautical miles in altitude, 155 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 9,500 feet per second. Mark, 4 minutes, 35 seconds. Challenger, 55 nautical miles in altitude, 174 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 10,000 feet per second. Four minutes, 50 seconds. Challenger, 56 nautical miles in altitude, 196 nautical miles down range. Mark, five minutes. Standing by now for Presto Mico. Challenger Houston, press to Miko. Five minutes, ten seconds. A press to Miko. A call from Capcom. That sounds great, Griff. The press to Miko call says, should Challenger lose one engine, uh, press on, keep flying forward. Challenger's engines have enough energy to achieve normal altitude and velocity at cutoff. Five minutes, 30 seconds, Challenger 58 nautical miles in altitude, 260 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading uh, 13,000 feet per second. Five minutes, 42 seconds, uh, standing by now for single engine tower capability. Preview, preview. Shuttle Control Houston uh, at 11 minutes 25 seconds, mission elapsed time, uh, loss of signal uh, now with Challenger through Bermuda. Uh, we will next acquire Challenger through Dakar in about six minutes. Uh, as, uh, as we approach the end of that pass, uh, we had a, uh, have had a uh, momentary uh, dropout in telemetry in the mission control. Capcom uh, Roy Bridges advised the crew. This is Shuttle Control Houston.
And challenge that completes the troubleshooting and thank you. Okay, John, you should be getting it now. Beautiful. John, you copy uh, that uh, we had a good radar uh, test number two? Yes, sir, we copied that. For a while before I wanted to do it here in the dark, but uh, from an evaluation, I, I could not get the spas right now. Didn't have those lights on it. They sure are nice. And John, uh, th these pictures were taken um, out of a thousand feet. That's beautiful. Another space first. The beat Bruce and his MMU. That's a beautiful shot. Henry, hope you like the arm. We see that. We have Mr. Nayholman, MPS. The way the uh, Alamans have been riding all along uh, during the flight, John, uh, we could always keep track of the left out lord and uh, the right in lord and outlord, but we could never see the uh, see the starboard uh, port in lord. We were glad to see we still had a port in lord and when we saw this shot. It is comforting, isn't it? This would be a great tool to carry on every flight for uh, orbiter inspections. Houston there again, you see Challenger with its uh, tail pointed toward the Earth. At the top of the screen, there's some uh, glare as the product of the sun's reflection off the radiators. Feet. Range 
each 23 miles. directly from the south at 10 knots. Challenger's airspeed, 255 knots, altitude 34,000 feet. Touching the hack now. 18 miles to touchdown. Out of 30,000 feet, at 257 knots. Beginning the wide sweeping left turn around the hack. thousand feet. 258 knots. Challenger turning final now. Right on the nominal track, uh, flight dynamics officer will bolt reports. Glide slope and turning toward the center line. 14,000 feet. 280, 292 knots. Your energy looks good. Surface wind 180 at 10. Ten thousand feet at 282 knots. On glide slope on center line. Sixty five hundred feet, two hundred and eighty one knots. Challengers back home, back to Earth. Uh, the unofficial touchdown time uh, in mission elapsed time, six days, two hours, 24 minutes, 10 seconds. That time is unofficial.
Roger, we see that. Uh, congratulations, a great looking landing. And uh, from the entry team, uh, we've got some good news. Good news is the uh, beer is very, very cold this morning. The bad news is it's 3,000 miles away. That's what I was afraid of. And I'll hand you over to uh, the good guy Gardner here, and he'll talk to you about your post landing. Glad to that. Crew disembarking now. inspection of Challenger. All five crew members. Hey, leader, safe. 